questions or comments about last week? Basically, pretty much last week we uh, uh, we talk about the um, the relevance of having a, a the discipline to do a transaction to to monitor the revenue and the expenses of our business uh, in in within the business cycle from the first of the month to the end of the month. So by the end of the month, we know if we made money or we didn't make money. Uh, and that's uh, is this, is just a discipline to also not necessarily to receive the money, but to send invoices and to pay invoices. Um, in my professional practice, uh, we always wrote checks on the 15th and the 30th of every month because it is my money, it is our business, it is the business money, it is my money. So I, I have the, the discretion to say when I pay bills and when I don't pay bills. I don't pay bills as they come because also you get distracted with the business. And if you, uh, they ask you, oh, we need to pay the, 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 the water, we need to pay the power, we need to pay power today, or we need to pay, uh, you know, the plumber. And, and there's all this, uh, daily and weekly demands that people are needing money for your for your for your uh for your business as, as vendors uh you, you you can lose uh track very easily and you get distracted and overwhelmed so in my practice i always recommend to pay checks on the 15th and the last of the month that way the 15th you cover everything that was in the first and in the last you pay on the last, you can pay the rent, you can pay the gas, you can pay the phone, you can pay every all, all the bills that are going to be for the uh, for for the for the upcoming month, uh, and and that's that's the discipline. So if you're paying bills on the, on the 15th and the 30th, then you try to make arrangements also to gather the information or to send the invoices if you need to send invoices with your for your for your parents. On the 15th or the 30th, or maybe on the 30th only. I don't know. It depends on how you how what skills what what, uh, what cycle you have. You can have a, a weekly cycle, or you can have a monthly cycle, or by monthly cycle. That's something that you have to. Uh, every, every business is is, is different, but uh, try to combine both. You know, the cycle of sending invoices, collecting invoices, and at the same time making payments, uh, and, and and all this goes also with. Uh, with tracking how your business is doing. So that's why, uh, but all, all depends on your schedule, all depends on your on your needs, all depends on your family demands. Uh, you know, for me, it was easy to do all that on the 15th and the last. On the 15th, I review something or on the last of the month, I always wait. So I always keep track of, of, of my expenses and my income. And uh, we saw a little bit about the, the benefits of the uh, of technology. Uh, obviously, the uh, the, the discipline. I am a, a fan of of Excel, uh, which now Google Sheets work the same thing. Uh, because in Excel, I have uh, the information uh, uh, visually. I can manipulate it. I can uh, I can see the the, the 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 months. I can see the reports. I can uh, sort the information. And in Google Sheet, it's the same. Uh, other people feel comfortable with Brightwheel or with Gusto or with Procare uh, or with QuickBooks. Now, the purpose is just to track the the income and the expense. I noticed that Procare tra tracks the income. And I think, I don't remember who was using Procare things, was Jocelyn or Jennifer. But the Procare, it is an app that really um, help us collect the money, bring the money. I mean, that's a, gr a, great, so a great source of, uh, of, um, of, of uh, electronic, uh, electronic billing. So you can receive your payments. Uh, and I would, I, I mean, I saw it, uh, I was looking at it uh, last week and I definitely I would recommend it because you can send your invoices and you can even do electronic transfer, fund transfer. Um, people can pay on the app. The parents can download the information, pay under the app. The same thing happens with Bright. Will Bright will can do the same thing. Uh, but the purpose is also to track the expenses, you know, track the expenses. And as I was saying, 
you know, one is the data sheet and the other one is database. And basically the database, uh, the data sheet, what I like about Excel is I can see the invoice, I can see the information, I can manipulate the information and I can, I mean, uh, because I like, I like Excel, right? But, but many times Excel is the same thing. This data sheet is the same thing as in the, in, in a, in a database, basically, uh, on the Excel sheet, you see all the information that you're putting in. You can see the dates. You can sort them. You can go back and look for the dates. In the database, basically, you have a window where you have to enter the date, or you have an amount in which you enter the amount or the description. You have the, the description. It's just a database in which you see each entry at the same time. It's just each entry. And then, of course, then you pull out the reports, and the reports can, can give you the, uh, the information that you need. So this is something that you want to consider uh, which way you want you want to go. There's not a specific, uh, there's not a, a pill, a cookie cutter for every single daycare because every person is different. Some people are visual, some people are more numeric, uh, some people are more practical, other people are more um, analytical, other people are less analytical. Uh, maybe some people have a, a partner that can, uh, or a, a spouse that can help them with the billing. Others may not have it, uh, may not have that, that spouse or the son. You know, I, I have I've seen uh, um, the, the, the common practice of that the spouse helps uh, the billing or the daughter. And many times it's the nephew that went to Cuesta College or Cal Poly and is working as an accountant and does the billing. So it all depends on how uh, on how you track your uh, your information, but I always recommend try to find the schedule and the discipline and, and, and track both ends of the spectrum, right? The expenses, which is important. That's how your money is going out. That's how your money can treat. That's, that's, that's how you, you can lose money if you don't keep hold of the expenses and your income. Make sure all the money comes in and you're counting all the money. And at the end of the month, you do the subtraction. Now, the purpose of the money is when it goes out, it has to go out always from the same source. Um, write a check and or write a check. Or if you pay with credit card, you know, pay with credit card, but it's always from the same source. In this industry, it's not the case as it is in, in, in shops, auto shops, or or restaurants, or uh, or any other any other um, venue in which you know there's a lot of cash flowing into the house, and or maybe the case you know maybe the case to some of you that the, the, the customers pay cash, and then oh you need to go to the grocery store to get some milk, and and you need the money or you're proud of your son says say mom i need to go to the grocery store and the easiest way is to oh here's the cash and give them the cash you may not do it intentionally but you're mismanaging your funds of your own business and you're making a detriment to your own business uh because that cash then it's not going to be accounted the right way and it is a, a way in which your business can lose uh, money uh, so when I say make sure that every transact, er, er, all the money goes out from one source, that means uh, this you have to wait. I know there's an emergency. Here's a check, uh, or wait until tomorrow when I have my when, when I give you the check, or then you can cash the check. But at least you have that discipline of not using cash easily if you have access to cash, because that's, to me, that's been the worst, uh, the worst practice in, in a lot of businesses. Uh, so either pay with cash, uh, pay with credit card, uh, or pay with check. Uh, so let's make sure that one day of the month or one or whatever cycle you select, there's always this consistency. Every second Friday, or every first Friday, or the fifteenth, and the last of every month, to keep track of those of those things. I mean, it's very important, and I I, I really encourage you to 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 to, to consider that. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, uh, or any comments, or any specific any specific um, uh, analysis of things. But I I'm, I'm sure you you you're very um, based on the on the information that I have uh, that I see on this uh, on you, you already have a system to 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 work on that. 
Now, uh, let's talk about uh, a little bit about taxes. Uh, taxes can can be intimidating, uh, but we just need to to understand why, uh, how they work. And obviously, some of you may already have the experience uh, or have been audited or may have not been audited, or maybe they have experience because they work, uh, I think, uh, um, in, in accounting, but uh, I'm gonna try to be as you know, informative as possible. Uh, so what's the purpose of taxes? Uh, understanding taxes, uh, this, this I, I don't wanna be any, no, no, I mean, the, the reality is that, uh, uh, the taxes is, is the mean for our means uh, for government to provide social services or social infrastructure for the well-being of our community. I mean that's not an I mean that's that's the nature that's the purpose of taxes and that's been the the, the history of society of of of, of human uh, human communities. You know there is a way in which people have to precisely they call it tax. Uh, uh, the citizens to provide for safety, to provide for roads, to provide for protection, to provide for anything that 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 those those when I say social services, not necessarily are moral or medical social services, but they're services that provide the well-being of the community. So we have it. Uh, I mean, we can see in many in many multiple ways. So the obligation of a citizen, and I would say the obligation, but the, the part of the citizenship, part of being part of a community, uh, you do it at church, maybe you do it at a club, uh, you do it at, a, 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 at an association, you know, part of being part of a community is to participate in that well-being of my community. You know, you do the church, you do the club, right? You you join a club of whatever, you know, hey, you know, there's some fees, there's some dues. Well, that's that's a tax. And what do they do with those fees and those dues? Well, you know, it's to add money for the party or for the sign that is going to be outside of work. So that's the principle of taxes. It's just a way in which us as citizens or members of a community participate in the well-being of the community to share part of our our of our. Of, of our wealth, of our capacity, of our gifts, of our, our talents into the community. And at the same time, it's the way in which the means of the government, of the entity, uses that funds to provide services that will re be, be rein rein um, uh, reinvested into the community. And that's where we see the discrepancies of some countries or some communities or some, you know, dramatic places in which, yes, you know, sometimes you don't see your taxes at work, or people with the money start using the money for other purposes, and then then we, then we go into this in this section. So, basically, uh, uh, you know those 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 taxes, uh, that money, and, and, and especially in the in, in, in the U.S., where we where, where do we see them? You know, we see them in roads. You know, the freeway. Maybe this is not the best freeway, but we can drive to uh, from from here all the way to Texas, or maybe to to Nebraska, or even to New York in a in a fairly safe environment uh, through access to roads that are you know well maintained within you know with the majority of things as opposed to other countries in which we cannot even go outside maybe 25 miles because then the roads you have you have uh, <laughs> um, uh, you have issues with your, the road there is not finished the road is in bad conditions right? where else can we see them we see them in in, in safety. You know, the, the, we, we call 911. There's someone with a heart attack. And what do we do? Well, we call 911. Who pays? Well, it's not who pays for those 911, but the taxes are used for that. You know, I used to use for the safety, for, for security. And where else can we see the taxes? We see them in, uh, well, in, in probably in education. You know, the schools, we take our kids to the elementary school and they have a nice facility. And yes, probably they work with bonds and they work with other things, but most of the funding for schools is, it's come from taxes, right? not, not, not only the building, but the education of the of generations. What else? You know, obviously, when we have incidents of uh, of unemployment, you know, we lost unemployment during the pandemic. You know, there were a lot of people that needed the funds to continue with the uh, with, with the livelihood of, of, of one word or another. You know, with, with, there's there's disability, there's unemployment, uh, there's the, the social security, right? People, as we get old, we're going to see that about about retirement, right? Those people that put money into their social security that work with W twos or W twos, 
or individuals, independent, you know, they, 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 that's, that's where they are. So where are the, so the, the, the taxpayer, the citizen is liable, I mean, we're liable through two ways of, uh, of that money. How does that money, uh, the money is, the, the tax now becomes money of the government. So we are liable to bring that money back into the community. And how do we bring that money back is the wages or commercial transactions. It's very simple. It's just the way we can do, wait, uh, at least here in the United States, is through wages and commercial transactions of property, right? So the taxpayer basically has the money that corresponds to the government. So that's why the government is very tricky depending on the country, right? Depending on the country, of course, but uh, those who have, have the opportunity to travel to, I don't know, to Morocco, to India, to China, to Australia, to Mexico, to Panama, to Cuba, you know, we can see those discrepancies. But the taxpayer has the money that corresponds to the government. So the government is going to say, okay, I, I'm going to, the government is tracking the, the money that the citizens have. And and, and the government has gets very serious when we do not pay taxes or when we don't do our due diligence on, on that money. So they can continue giving us what, the, what, what we need even for, for safety or for whatever. So let's see, for example, the analysis of the business or the commerce, right? When a consumer, when the business sells something to the consumer and the consumer buys that, tangible purchase, you know, in that transaction of tangibility, we have what is called the sales tax. And the sales tax could be a sales tax that is usually for the state. It's not for federal uh, funds, but it's for the state. Uh, and that's where we incur, you know, that money, that fiscal transactions incur the sales for commercial transaction, that is the sales tax. If the way we do it through wages is as a business, I am, I am a business. So when you, for example, when you go out in this case, right, in the first case, when you go out and buy milk or you buy sodas or you buy uh, towels or you buy uh, uh, something tangible for your business, there's a commercial transaction and you pay taxes. They charge you some taxes. That's why you pay the taxes. Now, who's responsible for paying the taxes? You as a consumer, you already pay the tax to the business. So the business is responsible to the, 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 that money. I mean, you bought, let's say you buy a carpet for $10 and they charge you $2 for taxes. Those $2, the business owner has the money, but that does, those $2 do not belong neither to the consumer, neither to the business. They belong to the government. So that's why the state of California is very aggressively, you know, auditing and, and asking for, for how you keep your records and how you uh, do your business to see if you're really collecting the proper amount of, um, amount of taxes, right? And the same thing happens on the other side. Now with employees, the employee, every time I hire someone, the employee provides a service to the business, an employee provides a service to the business, the business pays back through the employment, pays back to the employee. So as we place back to the employee, there's a commercial transaction. There's an exchange of money there. And that exchange of money, again, is what is called the taxes through employment. So now the taxes through employment, both the business and the employee are responsible for some portion of that money. The employee has portion for that money and the employer has portion of that money. This is their taxes. We're both taxes as an individual, Mm -hmm. and as a business. So when we have employees, we have to pay taxes on both ends. And that's why it is, I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not that it's that, 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 that it important, but it's, that's why we, we have to understand when we have, uh, you know, this, the, the rules, the employment law, you know, the employment law, this employee is an employee, it's not a slave. Mm -hmm. Because it's a slave, you know, then he will not have access to his taxes. But because he's an employee, he has access. To, he has also responsibility to make that, those pay, those taxes, those those payments of taxes. But this employee cannot be a, 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 an independent contractor, right? Because then, then the independent contractor, they have to have their own taxes. They also have to have their own taxes, right? But so sometimes when we try not to pay taxes on our part of the tax of, of the business. And the employee doesn't want to take the that doesn't want to pay the taxes. That's where we have you know problems with the uh, with 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 uh, with labor law, 
well, problems with the with the with 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 other entities that that that, that consider you know that we're not paying taxes, we're evading taxes. You know that's why evasion of taxes is critical here in the U.S. and 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 in many other countries. You know, and other in other countries they don't have. You can see in many other countries, like in maybe in Libya or maybe in Nigeria or in Saudi Arabia or whatever, they may not have this structure on how we can track how the government tracks the taxes. You know how and how the how the 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 the, 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 the tracking tax anyway. So that's basically how how taxes uh, some of the taxes work. So another way that we have the the, the tax as a business as a business as a commerce is what's called the income tax, which income tax is what we know you know is my sales, what money comes into my business, minus my expenses. I'm going to have a profit or a loss. If I have a profit, that's why it's called income. I have my income tax. If I have profit, I have to have a tax on that profit. And if I have a law, uh, if I have a loss, then I saw I have, uh, I would say, a waiver on on those taxes. And that's why I can, if I generate losses, I'm not paying taxes. And that's many times how many business people they want to create companies so they can generate losses so they can generate less taxes. So for the IRS, uh, for the Internal Revenue Ser Service, it is important that we never either underestimate our sales, because if we underestimate our sales, that means that we pay less taxes, but at the same time that we don't overestimate our expenses. I mean, it has to be within reason. I mean, it has to be fair. It has to be clear that you're not underestimating your sales and you're not overestimating. So you get penalized for underestimating your sales by not reporting everything that you sell or by overestimating your expenses by saying that, oh, I use this money for this when it is not necessarily for, it was not necessary for your business. And we go, we're gonna talk more about this as we, uh, as we revisit the forms uh, in the IRS. So this profits, where do I show them? This profits, I show them in my Schedule C when I need to take to, to, to take to take my 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 Schedule C when at the end of the year. Now, from on, on the side of the employee of the employee, if I'm employee, if I am individual, I also have income tax. As a business, I have income tax. As an as, a, as an individual, I have income tax if I work, right? And and how do I report that in my W two? In my W-2, at the end of the year, I present my Form 1040, and that's how I am taxed. I'm taxed in my in my Form 1040 because as an employee, as an employee, I get my W-2. As a business, the, the 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 how much you made is reported in your Schedule C. As an employer, as an employee, how much I make is reported in my W-2. And this is in, in my form in my form 1040. Yes, a business I also report in my form 1040, which we will review the forms uh, a little a lot later in the class. So let's say, for example, I have this business of the three little bear, the three little bears uh, childcare. Uh, I do my sales. I have ten parents and whatever, and I have I record my sales at the end of the year, and I track my expenses. So then I have a profit or a loss. So basically, I need to tax my file. I, I need to file my taxes. Uh -huh. I need to file my taxes on this on this schedule. If I am a sole proprietor, if I am a sole proprietor, that means that the name of the business is on my name. I report that on, a, on my Schedule C. That's if you're a sole proprietor. If you are a partnership, an LLC, or a corporation then you report that in your Schedule K. It's a different approach when you are a partnership, LLC, and a corporation. Why? Because the money belongs to someone else. You're sharing the revenue with someone else, either with your partnership, with your LLC, or with a corporation, which is a fictitious entity. The money is not yours. It belongs to the corporation. So that's why you're reporting the Schedule C. Now, many of the questions that I have, and probably this is not the case, but I'm gonna I'm gonna share this as part of the as part of the topic that that I give. 
you know, many, many cases they say, oh, but my husband or my spouse, uh, will my money, will my, my, my business uh, be added to my husband's or my spouse's uh, income? Or should I file separately? Or should I, what, what do I do? All these questions about if my spouse has, uh, works for Walmart or he has, uh, he has business, right? Well, here in California, uh, you can file, well, I, I, all that I know, I'm, I, I want to make a disclaimer here. I am not a, a CPA. And I am not a tax advisor. I'm just a, a person that had experience in business, and I'm just sharing my expertise uh, with you. If you have more specific and detailed questions, you can contact your tax advisor uh, or, or a CPA. But um, but what happens is uh, I'm going to see the case right now for the spouse, right? For example, that works for Walmart, right? The Walmart is going to give them a W two. And oh, what I was saying is here in California. Uh, um, it is a uh, uh, joint um, uh, joint property uh, if you're married. If you are a head of household, if you're not married, you probably can file separate. But if you're married, you know, you have to just this joint, this is a joint, uh, jo you just join, you file jointly. So in this case, if you're a spouse, if you're married, right? If you're a spouse, he works a W, uh, a Walmart, he gets a W2, or maybe he has a business in construction, right? You will have, you know, if business of construction is going to be similar as your business of so the three little bears, you will have a Schedule C, right? The construction will have a Schedule C, but the spouse, at the end of the day, he gets a Walmart. And all this money, right, the W-2 or Schedule C is going to be added to your, to the, to the spouse. All that income is going to be for the household. All that money is going to be a lump sum. And then that money is going to be subject to, in, to income tax. Mm, so the household, the household revenue, the how the household money is gonna be subject to income tax. And then of course the IRS or the state of California, they have different tables. If you have, depending on the dependents, depending if you own a house, if you don't own a house, if you rent, if you don't rent, you know, they have all these charts and tables that tell you how much tax you are allow. I mean, how, what percentage of your, of your tax is going, is going to be. So obviously we, the Schedule C, uh, all of us, you know, use the form 1040, 10, 1040 for, 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 for taxes. Uh, so basically pretty much that's the, that's the, uh, the, the lump sum of what, uh, of what taxes are. Now, let me share a little bit of the forms, which I'm sure you, uh, most of you are familiar with. Uh, just let me. And this are, I, I don't know how many of you filed your taxes on your own. Maybe, or all of you use someone else to file your taxes or something that, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. I just want to make an assessment of the class of the, of the room. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that, that none, uh, you, you are like most of, 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 of uh, of some of the uh, people where we're intimidated when we see that we don't want to talk about the IRS and we don't even probably want to, they don't want to be, we don't want to be part of the, of we think that they're, I mean, we're intimidated by, by all this, but this is a regular form. This is a simple form of uh, the IRS. This is the, the first page of your taxes. Uh, it is, uh, let me see. You know, it's a form uh, 1040. And it's just a very simple form. I mean, I, I know people file their own taxes and they feel comfortable filing their own taxes. That's fine. Uh, all the people, we give the information to, our, to an accountant or to a bookkeeper. But the, the, the form is, is, is very simple. They start, it, it asks you, let me just make it a little bigger. You know your status, and of course, here in California, that I know is uh, you. You, you're, if you're married, you file jointly. Uh, if you're head, head of household, in case you don't, you're not married. You know, probably, um, uh, or you're single. And then this here's the information, and they ask for your social security, of course. And then uh, you you start putting your deductions and your dependents if you have dependents, and here. The second, the, the, the second part of the of the form, then they will ask you for your income, 
And this is where, uh, where you start putting information if you are an independent contractor, if you are a business, or if you have a uh, uh, if you are an employee that receives money from 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 your employer. So if you receive money from your employer, then here's you put information for your W two. That's line number one. You put information on W two. And then what will be the number? Uh, I mean, of course, then you have all the other income. You know, if you have interest, if you have dividends, if you have IRA, we're going to talk about retirement. Uh, uh, probably the the, the the last the last class or pensions or annuities and what's taxable amount whatever. But then here on cap uh, on line eight, you know, capital gains. This is in case you sold a house or you sold a business or you have some capital gains. You sold stock. Uh, but here on, cap, uh, on line eight says income, uh, other income. Here's the here's the key word, right? Other income, and other income is for businesses. Uh, and here is uh, it's called, you know, Schedule 1. So then you go to Schedule 1, and here's the form of Schedule 1, and they will ask you for additional income. What are, what are their income? What are their money did you bring into your household? And for those that are, uh, those uh, that are um, sole proprietors, you know, most of them is just here it is on line three, business income or loss uh, as part as part of your schedule, uh, of, as part of your schedule C. And then of course there are other other sources of income if you if you got duty duty or if you won prices and awards or if you on the lotto, you know, other things, but this is where this is where you put the, the the schedule, the schedule C. And now let's go to the schedule C. When we go into schedule C, now it says right here on the left page, the schedule C, and that's probably sometimes is like the fifth, fourth page, but you can see it on your on your income tax in your taxes. You know what schedule C? Schedule C is here. This for so proprietorship, it is the profit and loss, profit and loss for business. So basically what is this? This is, as I was telling you before, is the record of your sales minus the record of your expenses, and you're gonna make the, the subtraction. So if you have been doing your monthly uh, the analysis of how much you sold the month and how much you spend the month and how much you sold the month, how much you sold the month. Every single month, by the end of the year, probably by the month, uh, by the by the by November, you more likely know how much you made for the year. And by December thirty first, you are ready to file taxes. Why? Because you're keeping records of everything. And that's why you need to do. And basically, here comes the income. Here's the first back, the first part, income or sales, what it calls sales or income. All you need to do is just copy that information that you have from your weekly or your monthly uh, analysis. Gross receipts. That's where you put. So if you've been tracking them every month by December 31st, all you need to do is just give that information to your accountant, or you need to just get that information. You finish your month of the December 31st. Probably you didn't finish on 31st because it's right, whatever. Because you've been tracking every month, you just you just copy that 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 number, and maybe you was uh, forty five thousand dollars, right? Forty five thousand dollars. And of course, many times you know you may have uh, a different. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, what is called the cost of uh, the cost of goods sold. Some of you, some of you, may have cost of goods sold in the case of uh, what you spend for food. In the case you were feeding some, you sometimes you buy you you buy you buy you buy food for your for your lunches. So if you bought food, then you probably can put I don't know I'm going to put you know five thousand dollars. 
or probably some of you receive money from the uh, uh, from the state of California because they refund you some of the food at uh, 88 cents, you know, I don't know, 85 cents. So then if you receive that money from the state of California, then you put the money from the state of California that you receive in that money. So basically, this is where you where, where your accountant, or at least you will understand where, where, where to read. So that's your income if you receive any allowances from the state and if you purchase the food. But again, if you're, I'm, I'm telling you, if you're adding your expenses every month, then this, this becomes very easy and it's less, less intimidating. So then here we go. Here we are on the expenses. On the expenses, uh, the IRS are giving us, uh, the IRS giving us what categories are uh, deductible. These are expenses. What is deductible? What can I deduct from my uh, from my income? And that's why I said, you know, everything, anything that related to your business is deductible. Everything that you use for your business is deductible. A trip for a study. I mean, you went to a conference in in, in Hawaii about uh, daycare accounting or daycare uh, practices, most common daycare practices. You can that that's that's a, a business deductible expense. You have to have a meeting with a with with a parent that it is enrolling a kid, and you have to meet him at uh, or meet them at uh, I don't know at, uh, at the Starbucks, you know? and you bought the coffee for the father and the mother. You know that that that's a, that's a meal, that's an expense for your business. So everything is deductible within within the principles of the business. The problem with the IRS, when you get audited by the IRS, the problem is when when these expenses are completely off, right? And you spend, you know, you then, then you you bought a uh, bought a yacht <laughs> or you bought a you, you went to Cancun to, to vacation and a yacht. This as well, you know, what I, I, I can first of all, what were you doing in Cancun? And then what a yacht, what does a yacht need to do with with your with the nature of your business. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where where people get 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 in trouble. So basically here it is uh, under the categories advertising. Anything that you spend for advertising, social media, the business cards, your flyers, your um, uh, newsletters, if you do newsletters, the sign that you put in front of your of your of your of your daycare. That could be considered advertising. Car and truck expenses. Yes, uh, I mean, if you are using your car uh, within the, uh, let's say you have, a, you're, you're driving your car to drop some kids or to buy the groceries for the, for the, the supplies for your, for your daycare and you have, uh, it breaks during that trip, you know, you can justify it, you, you can do that. Commission fees, contract labor. If you receive contract labor, contract labor maybe probably if you want, you can see a plumber. That will be a contract labor. Uh, or if you hire, I mean, we're gonna uh, we can talk about a little bit about contractors. You don't use a lot of contractors because it's a daycare, right? But uh, you, uh, but if there's we can talk about that. You can depreciate depreciation. Uh, depreciation is an expense. And that's, for example, if you, let's say you bought, and, and that's something that, again, you have to talk to your bookkeeper or to your accountant. Uh, some businesses, uh, you can depreciate the expense right away. Uh, other businesses, you cannot, you, it depends on your business, you can depreciate in five years, uh, either a straight line or probably tapered, uh, depends, right? But let's say, for example, I bought, uh, I bought a dishwasher, I bought a refrigerator for the kids, and I bought my all my appliances, right? That's part of my of my depreciation. And I can probably put them as a as a percentage of depreciation. Employee benefit burns. We want to talk about that when we talk about retirement insurance. Other than health, yes, you pay insurance probably a thousand dollars, maybe a thousand dollars. That's already a, a line that you can you can you can put interest interest. Uh, the interest could be uh, in this case, obviously. Uh, you can put on as, as part of your interest for your um, 
uh, any any loans that you have, the interest that you pay with the credit cards, you know, you're using your credit card to pay to buy a Costco, and then you maybe have a balance of uh, you know maybe five thousand dollars every. You have an outstanding balance five thousand dollars. You've been carrying it for five years or for seven seven years, and the credit card is charging you interest on that. On that, you can put that interest uh, of your of your credit card. Uh, the mortgage paid banks is in case you have a house, you know, you can put the mortgage. But again, in this case, this is what we're going to talk about. In this case, if I have a mortgage out in my house, how come I am going to put my mortgage in my business? I cannot put all my mortgage. No, you cannot put all your mortgage. You're going to put a portion, a percentage of your mortgage into your business expense. Mm -hmm other kind of uh, interest, uh, legal professional fees, office expense, uh, we're gonna talk about office expense, pension, if you have pensions or profit sharing plans, we wanna talk about that about when we talk about uh, retirement. Uh, of course, here's the rent or lease, uh, the rent of lease, I mean, this, this section was the interest, the section of interest on your mortgage. But this is the rent of the lease. You have to pay your rent. I mean, how do you pay for your for your house when you own the house? Your business is in your house. How do you pay that section of the rent? Is an expense that you can put on your on your income tax. And this is where we we're going to talk about that a little further. Other business property, in case you have uh, other businesses or machinery, sometimes some. Some businesses, some uh, I know some households that they buy their furniture, they rent their furniture. Uh, some people buy their furniture and some people rent their furniture and they go to rent a place or rent a, rent a the place where you, they, they even rent the, the artwork that is in the house. So I don't know, it depends on how you do your business. Repairs and maintenance. Repairs and maintenance is the repairs of the plumbing, the elect electrical, uh, maintenance, you have to buy the, the laundry soap to wash the, the blankets. Uh, you have to buy, uh, now uh, I've, I've heard a lot of stories that with uh, during the pandemic, right? You have to buy, you have to disinfect all the all the toys every every hour. And you have to buy more uh, uh, Clorox or more um, disinfect, uh, you know, to sanitize. Uh, sanitize more wipeouts, more 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 whatever Clorox uh, wipes, and used to sanitize uh, the place. Well, probably your 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 maintenance went went up. The supply is the same thing, you know. Some supplies is something that you use uh, within the term of a year uh, or within the term of time that will keep you up. You know, for example, supplies you buy napkins or towels. And then, of course, tax and licenses, your license, if you have to pay your license, sometimes if you have to pay uh, other taxes, uh, in this case could be the taxes of, uh, of, uh, of, of items that you purchase, right? If you break it down as part of the, if you want to break it down as part of the taxes. Travels and meals, we talked about that. You know, you can, you can have, you can put your travel if you went out to, to travel to see other daycares. Deductions and meals, you can have deductions and meals. Utilities, uh, obviously utilities are the power, the water, sewer. Wages, if you have paid wages, I don't think in this class, I don't see a lot of people having employees. And then uh, in case we miss something, you know, in case we miss anything, there's another section that we can go to line 48. Uh-huh. And uh, here it is. You can have other expenses, anything that was not covered in this section of our expenses, I have an opportunity to put them in here. And of course, in here, it could be, oof, I don't know. I mean, not very, not a lot of people use this section, but there may be something, I don't know, you up in, a, uh, you, you, you have to pay for your website. You know, you did a website uh, and uh, you, you may not, you may not consider this as an advertising 
or you may not consider it as professional service. You may be considered as a website development. So you can put here, you know, website development. Uh, or um, or maybe the fees that you pay for an application, you know, you, when you have the, when you have uh, uh, pay for QuickBooks or for Brightwell, you have to pay fees. Well, I didn't see any somewhere here uh, fees. You know, I didn't see any, oh, commission and fees. Well, you have to pay the fee, but if you want to put it in fees there, you can put it in here. You put, you know, accounting software fee. So these are more options for you to add other expenses, much other options so you can expand on your expense. So expenses then will go right here. And then here's the calculation, basically pretty much is uh, your total expenses. Then you add them here, your total expenses. And for there, then you have your net profit and loss. Basically you subtract line 30 from line 29. Line 30, which is your uh, your all your expenses, uh, you start line 30 from your line 29, which is all your profit, all your profit, all the money that came in, you subtract all the money that goes out, and this is your profit. So in here, if in this line you put 45 or whatever that amount, that's the one that is going to be shown. I mean, in this one, that's going to be the line that is going to be shown on a schedule one here. So if in your schedule C, let's say I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to put the number, you know, my total expenses were 40, uh, 40,000. So I made uh, 45 plus five minus five. I did 45, uh, I mean, space force five. So my profit and loss, my profit was, uh, profit was $5,000, $5,000. So this $5,000 are carried over into my schedule one. And here's gonna be $5,000. And then from this schedule one, it's gonna be carried over into my 1040. And it's gonna be on line eight, all the expenses, all the things is gonna be my $5,000. So that's how the forms track, uh, the forms connect to each other. So, but we're not done with the Schedule C yet. You know, we're not done with Schedule C. There's another section in here that uh, it is interesting to review is the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold is for something that you sell with which you collect taxes, or that is to bring the service, uh, something tangible that you sold. Many times this is the food that you collect for, that you buy for the students and you charge for that food in your, in your, in your enrollment uh, because you give them sandwiches, right? You give them sandwiches for lunch. And that food, you prepare that food, you can collect taxes on that food if you want, or, you can, or, or if not, at least you can put the cost of it sold. Basically you put the number, the, the, uh, the, the, the food for, for restaurants or for, uh, or for grocery stores or for shops or for anything that sells something tangible. It is very helpful. I don't see that uh, you may have much in this part because your sales, your food is part of the service and you're not collecting tax on the service. But if you need to put it as a cost of goods sold, you know, you can put it, but it will be probably uh, more on, on, your, on your supplies or on your, uh, or probably in this other section that says other expense. That's something you can ask and you can discuss with your with your accountant. But basically, the cost of goods sold is uh, the, uh, the 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 amount of money uh, the, the 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 cost of the goods sold. Basically, this the good this the good that you sold. It was the food, and you, you're not selling food, you're selling service. So that's why it may not be applicable in your case. But it's basically the purchase, the purchases of, of the inventory of the money that, that, that you work. And they're gonna ask you which, which way are you calculating this, uh, this if you're calculating by cost, by, by, by use of inventory, by how you work with, with inventory. But this is if you sell, items uh, for sale. Um, and then uh, obviously there's a section for your uh, for your vehicle. 
Uh, we're going to talk about that in the section of your vehicle. You have also, depending on the on on the way you 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 file your taxes, you have a lump sum that you can that is the maximum that the IRS gives you, or you can apply the miles used, and and then you can you can use the the the, the miles that you use for business, uh, for commuting, uh, for other. And we want to talk about that, how you can track your miles. So basically, these are the uh, the this are the forms for the uh, for taxes. Uh, very simple. They're not complex. They're not intimidating if you're familiar with it. But the key is when you track. I mean, obviously, people that are using Procare or people that are used to track the the income. You know, we sometimes many times we think about this. Oh, just this is just the income. But no, we have to track also the expenses. And the expenses, the IRS is already giving us what is what we need to track. So you can use this as a reference. And everything that you, uh, I remember I was telling you at the beginning, you need to track the receipts and you need to know what are the receipts for. And that's why I was, I was telling you uh, when we were working with Excel uh, to track, uh, let me see if I have it here. Uh, Mm, no, I think I didn't. I didn't uh, okay, I, I need, I'm, I'm, I'm using my uh, to track to track the expenses. We need to track what what is what we're tracking, uh, and and that's the, that's pretty much because of taxes. That's the purpose of keeping records, because if we don't keep records, then the taxes become intimidating, and then. It is um, this like snowball that keeps growing and growing and growing and then we're, we're completely lost. Uh, I want to take a pause here. Any, any comments, any questions, any concerns, any ideas, any shares, any experiences that you have heard or, or that you have, you want to discuss, you want to expand more? Hi, I had a question. Yes. Um, so I right now I am the licensee we're going to be of the business at some point, my husband will, I I'm, we're expecting that he will probably join me and we'll be licensed. We want, I just wanted to get my feet wet first, but then at, how does that work? What would, would we both be sole proprietors in that case? Uh, no, you cannot be to, for the IRS. A sole proprietor is just uh, one person. So how would we designate that? Um, you have two options. You can create an LLC. Well, you have three options pretty much. You can create an LLC, you can create a partnership, or you can create a corporation. A corporation. And at this point, then I'm gonna to refer to Daniela uh, to see if the, if the centers can be corporations. I think that's something that it is up to the Department of uh, Social Services if they can create a corporation. Are you ready, any feedback on that, Daniel? I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna have to do some research on that and maybe I can get back to you, Jennifer. Yes, um, so, so the licensee is, uh, let, 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 okay, go ahead, Daniel. Oh no, go ahead. So, so the licensee, the licensee is you and your husband, right? But the business entity, which is the name of your business, the business entity for the IRS, could, is, is either one is the owner, which could be you or your husband is the owner and is responsible for paying taxes, or both of you are responsible for paying taxes and you make a, 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 a partnership. Uh, and let's say the what what what's the name of your of your baker? Oh, we're the um, field of dreams. Okay, field of dreams is the name of the business. So, field of dreams could be the name of the corporation, or it could be the name of the partnership. So, the partnership is called. Um, uh, field of dreams or the partnership. Well, I, I'm not making, I'm trying to make. So let's 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 say you know field of dream is the name of the corporation and the light the 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 
the uh, uh, the, the operators of the of the of the corporation are two licensed licensed individuals, which is you and your husband. But for the IRS, the corporation is the one that needs to pay taxes. If you make a partnership, and the name of the partnership is Field of Dreams, it's the same thing. The partners are licensed, and they are the ones who are uh, have the authority to do the license and. For tax purposes, is the partnership who is responsible for paying taxes. Does it make any sense of what I'm saying? For example, uh, let's say uh, you. Uh, what, what time? What time? Uh, where is your Where is your business, uh, Jennifer? Sorry, it's in San Luis. Okay, it's in San Luis. Let's say yeah, you go to. Uh, 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 let's, let's 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 put the case of the of the Madonna, right? If the Madonna is a sole proprietor, only one person, only one person is responsible to the IRS. The IRS is not going to go anywhere else. It's just going to be to one person who is a sole proprietor, mm -hmm. and it's going to be Mr. Madonna. But probably the Madonna, they say, you know what? I don't want to be a sole proprietor. I want to create a corporation. So then the Madonna has, it becomes a corporation. And as a corporation, then the IRS is not going to go for Mr. Madonna or it's going to go for anybody else. It's going to go for the corporation that is named, maybe someone else, but somewhere else, but it's a, it's a corporation of Madonna. Or maybe they create a partnership. You don't know if the, 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 the Madonna has, has had two partners. But for the IRS, the purpose of the IRS is going to go to the, uh, go after the, uh, the fiscal entity. And there, so there are many options to be a fiscal entity, sole proprietor, which is only one person. It's only one person. They're not two. It's only one. It's the owner. Two people or more, which is a partnership, can be the owners of the business. Uh, then there's a combination of this with the LLC or with a corporation. I don't know if I made it clear, but... Yes, you did. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, I got another question that I'd like to piggyback on that. So um, expenses and everything, say your mortgage as a sole proprietor or actually as an LLC or corporation, you have, you've made your business that, but it's still in your home, your home base, because if I understand correctly, the license is issued to the person in a particular home, like your home. So you make it an LLC, you... Um, expand or whatever it is that you need um does the mortgage and everything in the expenses related to the home still remain the same or are you basically putting yourself into a contract where saying oh you know i live here but i'm gonna expense out like oh here's the rent that's you know due like how does that dynamic change you know as far oh. as expenses and write-offs and you know it's still your home type of thing what happens to the home i guess okay. sorry that was a little convoluted Yes, let me see. I probably need to bring another another slide here that may be helpful for you. And it's not part, I mean, I can um I'm gonna I'm, we're gonna go a step back. Let me let me get a file uh because this topic I think is important and I, I can sense the questions are. Let me get a file here. So one thing is the licensee and the other, other thing is the business entity. I like two different things. Um, but I, I don't know the rules for the social services. Uh, for example, when you're, we, there, there are some, some fiscal entities that are not, uh, they're not, uh, they cannot go to LLC. For example, if you're an insurance agent, you cannot go, you cannot create an LLC because the liability is not is not applicable to you. And I think there's not that many restrictions for you, but that's something that Daniela can help us. But let me just get another presentation here real quick. Um, um, oh. I don't have an answer right now, but I try to and have an answer next week or if I find something within this week, I'll email you and let you know. Um, the only thing that I do know is 
most some of the providers that I've been working with, they only focus on like if the husband works with uh, with you, they treat it as an employee. And that way you can reduce more things on your taxes. Um, that's the only thing that I've seen, uh, but I'm not really sure about the other part. Um, and I'm not too familiar with taxes either. So I'm not really sure how, I know you can deduct how much you paid and then it goes together. And I know there's more about it, <laughs> but I'm not a, sex expert yeah. well I'm not there either I'm just kidding I was just curious at this point because you know I'm like oh well you can a center is totally different and I think that the center can be anywhere else right other than your home right but um I, I'm not there yet I'm just I'm no simple. that's fine <laughs> no so and, provider for me <laughs> yeah no that was also going back to Jennifer's question uh so your husband can be your employee and you can deduct what you pay him, uh, but I'm not really sure about um, if you can do a corporation. I'm not too familiar. I will ask Mariela. She's my supervisor. She might know a little bit more, um, and if not, we'll do our research. Okay. Yes. So um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, in, uh, to, to Lupe. So you are the licensee. So you have your license, but then you have to do a business as. Everything that does business does a business as. Even the corporation has a business as. The, li the limited liability has a business as. They do a business as, which is the name of the business. And as the business as, then you have, uh, you have to create a business entity. So your mortgage is going to be under your name, but your business has an expense of rent. Right, so so that's where your mortgage is become a part of your. You can put the cost of your mortgage, a proportion of your mortgage, into your business expense, and that's where we're going to talk about that. How there's two ways in which then your mortgage is part of your business expense because you you have the license, right? You have the business, you have the license to take care of the kid of, of kids. Now, where are you going to take care of the kids? You need a space. And that is space as a cost. And that's that space cost is called rent. So as a business, you have to pay rent. Now, that business, you decided to put it into your house. So then you have to pay rent for that space. But at the same time, because it's your house, you're paying a mortgage and you're paying rent or you're, you're paying rent. Maybe you're, you, if you have, if you have, if you run the house, you pay mortgage, you buy the rent. But then your business needs to show that expense. How can that business show that expense? And the only way to show that expense is by share by taking a portion of that space as part of rent. And we're going to look about that. And now, in response to Jennifer, uh, uh, I, 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 this, is, this is a very uh, small presentation. I don't know, but maybe for clarify a little bit about about the fiscal entities. So when you're a sole proprietor, and, and let's say your name is Jose Luis Jimenez, you, that means that you are 100% owner. Your responsibility, you are the only responsible of the, of, the, of the business. So when you're a sole proprietor, there's no one else. There's no one else. It's only one person. But if there are two people, if there are two people, then you, you can go 50-50, or you can go 87-13, you can go whatever proportion you want. It's called what is called a partnership. And that's when you have two people, in this case, you can as, as, uh, you can make your husband a partner or you can, or, or you can make, if uh, that's what Mariela was saying, right? Uh, Daniela was saying, if you're the owner, then you can have your, uh, your spouse as an employee. Or if you are a partnership, you can have both have a share because they're putting time, they're putting efforts and both of you share the benefits of the, then you split, the revenue, the, the, the profits in two. Uh, and that's what it's called the partners, right? The, your partner. And there's a managing partner. Usually is a managing partner. Usually is one that makes the decisions, right? Who's going to be the one who's signing the contracts, the one who's signing, let's say, for example, the one who signs for the gas or the one who signs for the, uh, make the decisions. So you're going to make, uh, you're going to buy the pro care. You're going to buy, I don't know, you're going to get a, a uh, the, the managing partner is the one who makes the decisions. 
But since your husband and wife probably both of you can make a decision, you can go 50 50. Uh, and then uh, when you create a, a corporation, when you create a corporation, you create a, a fictitious a fictitious entity, which is not a person. It's not a physical person like you, like me, that has bones and bones and, 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 and voice. You know, it's just a fictitious person that it is managed or it is administered by people, by real people, which are a president, a treasurer, and a secretary. Those are the three minimum um, members of a corporation. And they. this is what is called the board of directors, right? The board of directors. Uh, and it could be five, four, six, as many as you, as, as you need. And you have to have a, a resident agent, which is someone totally different from the corporation that registers this corporation to the secretary of state. And that's why, uh, and the same thing with LLC corporations. LLC or corporations are, uh, are a hybrid of, of partnerships and, 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 and corporations, right? So you have, you have to register those in the state of California and you have to pay a tax every two years or have to pay a tax every, every year uh, uh, when, when, when you do, your, when do, you do your, your registration. But now this is how it works, right? This is the fiscal entity. This is the fiscal the fiscal entity, uh, sole proprietor, partnership, sole proprietor, partnership, corporation, or LLC, which you report, you recorded to the Secretary of State. And then there's another thing as doing business as. The doing business as is how this person, how you are going to do business, and you are doing business as field of dreams. In this case, this guy, Jose, is doing business as taco side. I mean, he's not doing Jose Tacos. I mean, call Jose Tacos. That's why it's called the doing business as for the fictitious name. So one is the fiscal entity and the other one is the business name. So when you're a sole proprietor, you, this person is the fiscal entity. The doing business as is the name has doing business. Maybe this association, this corporation, bro, this, this partnership decided to make the call Monterey Tacos Mexican food, right? Or it could be, in this case, all this two, three people decide to make the business as the field of dreams. And the same thing as the corporation, right? The corporation, then they have a doing business as, in this case, you know, they call it Tesla, right? In this case, you can call your business also field of dreams. So the name of your business does not necessarily reflect the name of your fiscal, not necessarily reflect the, the, the entity of your, of, of your fiscal entity. And what we talk about is the taxes or the fiscal, the, 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 the financial report. The financial report is totally different from the business, the, the doing business as the financial reporting or the, the record expenses is about your business, about the business that we are talking about. Uh, so, uh, well, this is, um, this is some advantages, right? You always, in your business, you also have lawsuits, you have creditors, you have licenses, you have gains, you have losses, you have capital, you have capitalization, you have all those things in the business. When you are a, a corporation C, the corporation really protects as a corporation, all these losses, creditors, licenses, because you create a fictitious entity, all this belong to the corporation. So the owners of the corporation are in a certain way immune. They're not directly impacted into this. When you are a sole proprietor, when you're a sole proprietor, you're the only person that is responsible for losses, the only person that is responsible for creditors, the only person that is responsible for licenses. If you make money, all are yours. If you make losses, all are yours. If you need to bring capital, you need all, everything is yours. So you are, the, you're not, you're indirect, indirect, uh, uh, you're, the, the buck stops on you when you're a sole proprietor. It's just one person. When you're a corporation, the, everything stops at the corporation. So, so there's like a barrier that protects you. Uh, and you can create an S corporation. There's some tax, uh, there's, 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 you can create an S corporation. But now again, I don't know if, um, I mean, you're going to be the licensee. You're going to be this person has the license and this person has the license. They are the license for, for your business 
for your physical entity, you can, I, I, I'm not sure if you if you can make corporation. I know, for example, for insurance, insurance agents, you cannot create an LLC or you cannot create a corporation. There's no way you have to have your own license. And of course, you have the corporation S. The corporation S is like a corporation that protects you from this, but your gain and losses go into you, into your, into your personal, into your purses. It's like the gain of the losses come to you, to the individual. You know, you can create a, a corporation. And the LLC, the LLC is a hybrid because some uh, some creditors and some some taxes, you know, they can protect you, uh, but others no. And you still, you know, the partners are still liable to some of the things that happens. So those are the fiscal, the 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 the, the, the nature of the fiscal uh, entities. Uh, so to your question. Uh, my husband and I can be sole proprietors. No, sole proprietors is only one person. It's only one person. If you have more people, you can make a corporation, or you can make an LLC, or you can make a partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, maybe some. I, I as Anila says, some some bakers they they consider the uh, the spouse as a as a as a as a as, a, as, a, as an employee, which is that so that's another thing, you know. And there's some implications on this with payroll. Now, for for Lupe, when we talk about the business, the doing the fictitious name, you know, the fictitious name, uh, that's another. I mean, don't, we, we don't need to get lost here. For example, this is Joseph Martinez, right? It's going to do business as Taco Star. He is a sole proprietor. He's a sole proprietor, but his business, the name of the business, is Taco Star. And the business Taco Star is going to have. Uh, income and expenses. That's part of the Schedule C, right? That's the taco start. He needs to know if selling many tacos and expending many, 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 many expenses, if he's making money, right? Jose Martinez needs to know if his business is doing is, is, is doing business, right? He's making money. And that's why it's important for the, the, the record keeping. So the fiscal is, let's say, you know, uh, then he joins with uh, Emily Smith and they want to make, uh, uh, they create a, a, a partnership and the partnership is called Solar Bakery. But Solar Bakery, how do they want to make, how do they want to know this partnership, this two partnership, they come up with a name, right? We're going to call Solar Bakery or our business Solar Bakery. But how, how are we going to, people, how are we going to know about my business? They can create a DBA or a fictitious name, a Susi's Cafe. That's what I was telling you about the Madonna, right? The Madonna, this is just a Madonna, it's Madonna, or maybe he has partners, and we don't know what the, what the name of the partnership is called, but they keep doing the business as Madonna, right? The name of your partnership is totally different as you're doing business as. And then probably you got another, another, another friend and they call the Three Sisters. And they want to call it the, the three sisters. This could be a corporation. This could be a partnership. They call it the three sisters partnership. But how do they want to know this business to be known for consumer or for the doing business as they want to call it, I don't know, Hotel Santa Clara. Hotel Santa Clara, it's, that's, that's the, the doing business. So the doing business, like full of, full of dreams in this, a field of dreams, field of dreams could be, could be uh, you're doing business as in all these three. You can be a sole proprietor, a partnership, or a corporation. And they have, all of them, they have different names. So um, I don't know if you have done this, or maybe you, I'm sure you have done it. Most of you have done it. They have to go to the, to the county, to the county, the state of California, to the county of the state of California, to the county of San Luis Obispo, and go to, uh, uh, go to your um, um, county clerk. And the county clerk, you solicit uh, your uh, doing business, uh, to doing business, you pull aside for three months and you do it, you're doing business, are your fictitious name, and you can take it to the, uh, and, the and that and that's that's the one you take to the, uh, uh, to the bank to open your bank account for your business so you can do transactions. But I'm sure already, you already have done that. I don't know if this make it more difficult, more complicated or clarify the questions. That was really helpful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Going back to the to the importance of record keeping, we saw now the relevance uh, how the 
how the taxes work. So now I need to track them. And how can I track them? And as I said last 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 session, you know, you can track them in a in a piece of paper as uh, as long as it is. Uh, you can buy your notebook, and every month you make your chart and you write your your name. I mean, the names of the accounts. Or simply, as I said, you can uh, you can use uh, Excel or or, or sheet or Google Google Sheets, which is. Uh, to me, is 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 um, some of you are familiar with Excel. If not, we can we can work in Google Google Sheet, and that's why why I like uh, why I like Excel because Excel is pretty much uh, a chart that you have columns and you have rows, and and through that you can you can make uh, multiple things. So, for example, you can put the dates. Uh, you can put the today's date is June. I'm going to put June 1st, uh, June 1st, and I just by dragging the computer uh, all, already fills in the months or the dates, right? So you can be creative and then you put you July. So you just want to do one per month. You can put here, this is going to be my sheet for the month of, I can rename it and I'm going to be, this is going to be for June. Uh huh. And then uh, you want to track, I don't know, uh, sales or expenses. If you want to track income, your deposits, you can put deposits. Uh -huh. And you can write the, the deposit for today, how much money came to the, to the store today or how, how much was the deposit. And, and you can keep tracking all of them. Uh, I'm just going to put a few. So at, at the bottom, you can just click a formula and it's just a very simple formula. And, 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 and Daniela, Daniela can help you with Excel. She's very, she's an expert. <laughs> or we can help you. You know, that's the purpose of our, of our, our, of our, of our, our institution is to help uh, accounting. So you already have your total at the end of the month. And all you need to do is just add the next day or today. You just add uh, how much it was. And you can see that the formula changes and keeps adding as, uh, as you, you have. And there's your, these are your deposits. And if you want to be more creative, maybe you probably can put the, the line of deposits and you can put, I don't know, I'm just going to create some. Uh, and that's why I like Excel, because it gives me the, the, the ability to do it as I, as I need. For example, deposit, I can put the name of the, of the family. Uh, the family, when they pay, um, well, this is going to be, I'm going to put family, this is family one, I don't know, family two, you can uh, create your, your clients, right? right? Or oh, by students, you only have 14 students, right? So, or you could put, you can track here who pay you, maybe this family one pay you today, uh, 350, then family two didn't pay anything, but they pay also 450 and this one paid 300. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure. And then, then June didn't pay anything. And then on June, this paid 450, they didn't pay, this one paid five, uh, uh, 765. I don't know. You can track your sales as it happens through the month. And all you can do is just keep adding your, <coughs> adding your expenses and you can add this too. You can also put your expenses to be, and this is your total for the entire month. Mm -hmm. And, and once you create your template, you go every Friday and you look at what day of the week they paid and oh, okay, this family paid me the 560 uh, on the eighth, uh, this one paid 450. 
and this from page 354. Mm -hmm. And as you see, every month, at the end of the month, you will have your totals of income. And, and that's what I like about Excel is that you can see, you can go back and see, okay, well, oh, this family didn't pay enough. And you can also know which, how much is, each family is paying you. And remember, I don't know if I told you that the purpose of the business of tracking records is something that I can make decisions based, based on making decisions. And let's say, for example, everything goes fine and at the end of the um, I don't know. This is what they pay, right? And at the end of the at the end of the month, I see that, oh wow, I made ten thousand dollars for that month because I had all my expenses. And wow, these two families are paying four hundred and four thousand dollars, almost five thousand dollars. Then you can see, wow, these are the families that I need to take care of. I mean, and of course I need to take care of all the families, but then I see how come this person didn't just give me a thousand dollars? Is it because he forgot to pay? I lost her business. Uh, or probably is not recurrent, or probably is good, but you know you, you can start making some decisions here uh, if 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 you if, if if depending on on how you make your template, and you can make your own template as needed as you want. For those people that don't have uh, uh, QuickBooks or don't have Brightwheel, in or they don't have uh, ProCare, right? ProCare they can give you all this. ProCare gives you all these reports, right? Uh, but you can also do with, with expenses. Now we're going to try here the line of expenses and rename expenses. And the same thing, we can put the we can put the categories. Uh, we're going to start with June, June first. Oops. And I can track my. I went to July, but I can do my. My expenses in June. And I can put the categories that the IRS is giving me, right? Advertising. Um, what else? It was um, the professional fees, uh, utilities. And I can make it, uh, make a note that I'm paying water, uh, sewer and gas, uh, I can put telephone, internet, uh, rent, um, what else, um, food, <clears throat> and as I go in my weekly review of bills i get my all my receipts and i say okay uh postage i can put mail uh travel i don't know uh -huh. and i can put my receipts okay now advertising today i pay 15 dollars uh professional fee nothing on uh, utilities i pay them on the end I pay six hundred dollars. Adding all the three together, the telephone on the fifth, I pay fifty dollars a month. On internet, I pay three hundred. On rent, I pay. You can calculate the your rent. We're going to talk about that. If food, I pay on the on the eighth, I pay six hundred dollars. On mail, I pay sixty. And travel, I had to go and went to whatever. whatever. You can you can call. And the same thing, you can just create your formula that adds the information uh, every on every category. And you can decorate it, you can put colors if you want. Um, and then I can see. At the end of the month, how much I'm making or losing, how much I'm how much I'm, I'm spending, and it is a very to me mm -hmm, 
uh, and then the next week I sit and I see, okay, how much did I pay for advertising? No, I have to pay 50, I pay for, for Facebook, a professional fee, so I pay a thousand dollars for my accountant. Uh, water supplies, uh, water, I didn't pay a telephone, nothing, internet, rent, or nothing, food. I had to go and buy another another six hundred six hundred and fifty dollars in food. In mail, I pay another a hundred dollars because I need to send a billing or I need to send a flyer for my for my enrollment and in travel. And at the, same, at the same time, you can put here the total of your expenses just by putting a formula. And these are your expenses. Mm -hmm. So then uh, for June, I made my revenue was 10,000. My expenses were $4,000 and I can put them together. And that's another thing that you can do with, uh, with Excel. You can put um, January and then you put here December. And in here are my sales. And in here I put my expenses. And here I can put my income. And you just create the formula, which is gonna be my sales minus my expenses. And you copy this formula along the way. And then here's the total for the year. And I put my formula here, total for the year, oops. And all I need to do is in June, I copy my report for June, which is this, and my report for June. this and I already have my and there it is I have my uh, my top I know what I'm selling every month I know what I'm spending every month and if I do the same thing for July let's say uh, say I'm, I'm I'm, I'm keeping the records for July. I'm gonna, oh. And let's, I'm gonna put more. Uh, And my expenses, I'm gonna do the same thing for July. If I keep my templates right in order, and this is gonna be expenses, name. This is gonna be for July. And I'm just gonna put here, And in my template of my income, I put what I make in income in July minus my expenses in July, right? So, and that's that's what I that's why I like about about Excel. I'm in control of the program. If you feel comfortable, if not, you can just use QuickBooks or any other application. But that's the purpose. If I'm keeping my records, I know that by the end of July, I, because I'm keeping every single day how much I'm making. 
I will know, I mean, let's say, um, this is, this is the, the, let's say we're at the end of July and at the end of the month, this person gives me another $500, right? So now, well, I'm gonna put 10, I'm gonna put $2,000 worth, you know, so say something. Now my revenue went to $14,000 because all the sheets are connected in my income expense. They already hear the 14,000 in July. Now I made 14,290 in my income statement, I have it 14,290. I already know that I made $3,000 in the month of July and I just finished the month of July. I just finished the month of July and my expenses in July, the last expense I made, the last expense I put $500 in, I put uh, $500 in, uh, in, in in advertising. So my expenses in July were 11,500. 11, in my income statement, I see that I are 11,550, and I already have this community. It's adding the, what I did in July, what I did in June, what I did in July. Guess what? Guess what? what guess what happens? You know, in August, then I will know how much exactly how I'm making by December. I already know how much I'm going to make for the year, and if I need to put something in the in 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 in, in the, my taxes, I already have information here broken down by. My advertisers, by advertising professional fees and my expenses, and everything is simple. It's it's it's, it's, it's a track, and it's it's not. It's I mean, it's cumbersome. If you like numbers, that's great. You can do it, and and I I I I, I by the by the volume of sales and by the volume of expenses that your that your business has, I recommend you know Excel. Or something like that. If you are, if you want to have much more uh, uh, accountability, or you want to do it uh, more um, savvy, you can do um, uh, QuickBooks or Gusto that they track income and expense. Income and expense. Um, and and as I said before, you know the purpose of record keeping is first to know how much money you're making. And second is to get ready for your tax time when you when it's time for tax for your tax because you already have that information and all you need to do is just put it in place and and you have a, a very simple life. It's your business. You do what you want. You take care of the kids. You do. Uh, you take care of your family. You take care of your personal needs, and you take care of your business, of course. And and to that, you need to select a specific day, specific time to do everything that we talk about here. And 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 you're not going to be intimidated by the tax season comes. Okay, yes, I have it ready. Uh, uh, or you need plenty of vacations. So, so you know what? I need to make. I need some more. I need to spend less. And and you know, month to month, month by month, you know where you stand. Uh, so that's why it's important to understand taxes and keep your records every day. Any questions, any comments? And as I said, it could be in Excel or it could be in your notebook and then a little piece of paper in one of those uh, uh, notebooks that they sell in, in, in Staples and you can track it. The purpose is just to give, have the confidence that what you're doing is right, what is your business. So you need to know how much money you're making, how much money you're losing. And if it, if it is taxing, look for help. Technology is out there. We are here. Daniela is there uh, to help you with anything that to make it easier for your business, and so you can be inundated by overwhelming tickets and billings and everything. And tax come and oh, well, and then we pay your taxes. Yes, by by January, my taxes are done. Boom. Or take have the luxury even to wait until. <laughs> Ah, uh, but but you already know. You already have. You're not going to be surprised. You're not going to be surprised. Or, but anyway, enough for my talking. Any questions? Any comments? Any? You said that for um, taxes, our rents could a proportion of our rent could be considered a business expense. How do we determine which what proportion is correct? 
Yes, thank you, Jennifer. That's a good segue, segue for my for my next uh, topic that I was going to talk about. And uh, okay, perfect. There's another question in the chat, which is the same question. Uh, and thank you for the uh, for the question because that gives me the opportunity to share that with you. So, uh, there uh, the IRS has two ways to to calculate the deduction of your child care costs. One is the space, and the other one is by time. Uh, the most common one is the space. If and and both 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 are correct, uh, they recommend to keep track of both because in case you're audited and your audit uh, the auditor wants to challenge you because the space is not the right or the time is not the right, it can go either way. Uh -huh. But uh, as long as you have one is it, 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 one well calculated and you can prove it, you're fine. Uh, the space is the exclusive use of the space for your daycare. The exclusive use of the space for your daycare. So basically you calculate the square footage of your house, the total square footage of your house. And to that, you calculate the area that is used for exclusive use of your daycare. The area that is used for exclusive use of your daycare. It can be a room, you know, if we have a room that it is only exclusively used for your daycare. Uh, uh, you have the storage, you, you're storing something in your garage and you have a cabinet that it is a specific exclusive use for your daycare. Uh, you can have a bin, a, a crib or chairs in your hallway. You can calculate the space that those cribs measure uh, maybe they're not in the, maybe they're not in, let's say in the living room, right? You have your living room and your living room, uh, sometimes you put kids on the on the crib, but you cannot move the crib every day, right? You just leave the crib there or, or the chair, or you have a, a bin with toys in the middle of your living, in the your middle of your living room. And, and this part of the, now becomes part of the decoration of your living room. Right, you calculate the space that that crib is using, the space that chair is using, and you add them all. The playground, anything, all the square footage that you have for your daycare, uh, you 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 add them all. So then, your space that that you use for exclusive use, you're gonna divide it by the total the space of your house, and you're gonna get a percentage. And that's the percentage that you can use from your rent. So your rent, $3, your rent is $3,000. You multiply that by this percentage, by this percentage, and you can only, that's the amount of rent that you can put as the cost of your business for your day. Uh -huh. So you calculate your square footage, you know what the square footage of your home is, and then you add every single room, storage, crib, furniture, space, you know, the, the calculation of the space that you use exclusive, exclusively for that. And you use it. Uh, your bedroom or your kitchen, you know, you cannot be because your kitchen is not exclusive. You know, your kitchen, you use it for your personal use. Your laundry, unless you have a dedicated uh, washer and dryer, you know, you can use that. But if you use that washer and dryer for your personal use and for the daycare, you cannot use that space of the, that the washer and dryer is using. It has to be exclusive use. So if I walk into your house and there's an exclusive use, an exclusive use of your house, you know, you can, you can cut, you, 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 that's, that's how you cut, you add them all, you add, them, you add it all, all this, all the square footage, all the measurements of the, the square footage, 
and you divide your space to special use by the total space of your household, of your home, and you get a percent. And that percentage is the one that you use for your calculation of your of your of your of of your deduction. The other way is by time. And it's similar. It's going to be similar, right? By time, the use of time is for the year, the time that you use for your business. Instead of a space, it's going to be time. The total hours in the year that you use for your business. So the total hours for the year is 365 days, five times 24 hours. That's 8,760 hours of the year. That's 8,700 hours that are in the year. So now out of this hours, how much time do you dedicate to every single activity related to your childcare? Every time you call a, a client, the time that you're using for this class, the time that you get in the car to go and buy the groceries or go, go and buy the food, the time that you use your car to the, pick up a kid, the time that you use to do your calculation, to your to record keeping of at the end of the beginning of the month or the 15 or the 30th of every month, every single time, the time that you went to make a bank deposit, the time you went to buy groceries, the time you made the phone calls, the time you did your billing, every single time, you add all your hours. You add all your hours. And of course, you add all your hours at the day, at the time, at the year, at the month, whatever. And you come up with a number that total hours you divide them by the total hours of the year and you're going to get a number you're going to get a percentage and that's going to be the percentage that you're going to use to deduct your house to deduct the cost of your home and the same thing for your utilities you know the the bill the the, the power bill is uh three thousand three hundred dollars every month well this percentage this number came to 25 percent well, the, the cost of the bill, 25%. The cost of the internet, if you have use, you, if you use internet for your for your child care, you would use your internet for your house, but you can use it. And, and it could go by space or by time. It could go either way, by space or time. The most commonly used one is the space. That's the most commonly used one. For your uh for your mental peace and for your mental uh uh, peace of mind, I would recommend to do the exercise to have both and see what the difference is. See what the difference is. And probably it's going to be about the same. You know, probably it's going to be about the same. And remember, the, the purpose of the IRS is not to overestimate our, our revenue, not, not to overestimate our expenses, neither to underestimate our, 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 our income. So if if this is in good faith, the way you're going to calculate your 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 deduction of your childcare costs, that's fine. But just also have in mind how much will it be for your time. Mm, does it does it make sense? Is it clear? Do you need to an example? Can I ask um, a question real fast? Excuse me? Can I ask a question real fast? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Um, so if I'm the sole proprietor, but my husband is in the business with me, and when we file, we file jointly, would his would we add up the time we both spent on the business? Oh, well, that's a good question. Um, so let me think, uh, let me rephrase your question. You're asking me uh, that you are the sole proprietor and the time that your husband uses plus the time that you use is the same for business. Uh, I would probably say no. That's a good question for a, <laughs> for a good CPA or for a good uh, IRS auditor, but I would probably say no. I would probably recommend that. Um, uh, I don't know. Uh, let me let me think. I mean, at prima facie, or at the first reaction to me, you would say, mm, no. Probably the best way is just to use your your husband as a, as a as an employee and pay him taxes. So that way, 
is time is an expense. It's okay, so he expense. was outside of childcare hours, he takes care of all the business stuff. I would just pay him from the business for those extra hours. For those extra hours? Yes. Uh, well, the thing is, uh, this is this is this is the, the question, the, the party from the IRS audit uh, perspective. Uh, you're the sole proprietor, so you cannot duplicate yourself in taking care of the kids at the same time, mm -hmm. because then you will you will overestimate the expense. Right. So if I'm taking care of the childcare for 10 hours, and then my husband is also doing that for 10 hours, that's 20 hours. Of mm -hmm. course, that I'm, 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 I'm overestimating the expense. However, if you're taking care of the business here at the house, but he's going out to make the deposit at the bank, since that's also time for your, for your, for your business, then you can add them. In that case, you can add them. But then you're going into, into this great area in which how are you going to track the hours that he did it for you and you did it for him and uh, et cetera, et cetera. You see, then you have to track his hours and your hours, and it's going to be a little confusing at the end of the, of the cycle. So I would recommend probably if it's going to be an expense for your business, the hours that he's using, I'd rather put him in the pay, in payroll and pay him for the hours that he works. And that way it's a, a, a clear cut expense line that everything that my husband do I'm paying him for him to do this and that's the spare does this make sense yes thank you the other way okay, it so. would be too gray and too confusing and that's the thing first thing that the IRS doesn't like and they say ah let me let me expect a little bit more about that and then that's when we start getting trouble. I, I'd like to add something to that not just to confuse it but I, just to see if this would make any sense so say um yeah I had a uh, another person helping me say, say it is the spouse. And during the hours that he's, that the daycare is open, logically, he can't log any of those hours, say he's doing something else, like making the deposit or something like that, because it's, it's hours of operation, right? So we're not gonna, we're not gonna add, say, uh, the daycare is open from 530 to, I mean, from 730 to 530. That's 10 hours, right? Um, at six o'clock, he spends uh, 30 minutes to go make a deposit, but it wasn't me, it was him, but it's for the business, right? You can't, you add those two hours to your working hours. I could say that I did it, right? You know what I mean? It's like, it's not, I'm not piggybacking, you know, I'm not saying that I'm not adding them. He didn't go during the hours of operation. He went after the hours of operation. So you can tack those 30 minutes on there where you were 30 minutes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you wouldn't yes, want to double it up while you were during the hours that you were working. You don't want to add those hours into that. But if it's legit and it's after those hours, then that that would work, right? Yeah. The, the, I mean, the, but you're right, but just very great. It gets great very easily. Yes, that, that, that would work. But then uh, as, a, as an auditor of the IRS, it says, okay, sh how can you show me that that, that took place? And another thing that I want to add is also that's why it's so really important that you keep track of your mileage. If you are going to be using, that's another way of um, deducting that from your taxes as well. Keep track of all your mi miles that you drive. If you go to the grocery store, if you go to the bank to make a deposit, if you go pick up uh, children from, from school, um, I mean, your husband will be helping you um, but you can't count the hours because yes, like as Lupa mentioned, it's hours of operation already, but you're also using the miles for your business. So that's, a, that's another way. Thank you, Daniela. Yeah, I was just putting as, as in my husband is not part of the business, but you know, it got me thinking, oh, okay, well then, yeah, you're right. So just close. thank you for that. <laughs> yes, I mean it's they're good questions. They're good questions, but to me, uh, the the easiest way is just to make sure that it's clear to me. And if it's clear to me, and it is within the guidelines, as long as I'm not adding more hours than what really are happening, but it's just it's better to have a clear clear cut. You know, I'd rather pay you for what you do, and it's going to be an expense anyway. You know. 
it's going to be an expense of my of my of my business. So I'm going to write off this time instead of uh, and it's clear because then there's a time there's a time sheet there's a signature there's a time that's the time he does it's going to be part of my claim um that would be uh, that's what i would recommend but uh, if you want to explore more you can contact with your tax advisor <laughs> okay and and then uh to, to wrap it up yes uh your car your car expense that was my next uh that's my my next uh element of, of deduction uh, it's the use of your vehicle. The use of your vehicle, the one you use for your groceries, the one to go to the bank, the one to rice. And what I recommend is uh, you can go to this app, which is Mile IQ. Uh, probably some of you already have it. Maybe you have other kind of application to do that. Uh, this is a, a very interesting app because it tracks your, uh, this is GPS, it tracks your cell phone as long as you have your cell phone with you. You get in your car, you turn it on, and you start driving. Uh, by the time you stop the car, uh, it tells you how many miles did you drive. And if you flip it to the right, it goes to your business, if it was business. And if you flip it to the left, it was your personal use. And that's how clear it is. As I was telling you, the, uh, with, the, with the IRS, uh, the, the clearer the things, the, the, the better chances you have to survive a, a, an audit. Uh, but when you start getting all complex and uh, it's, 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 it's just tricky because that, that's what they're looking for, you know, that you're not underestimating or overestimating either in the census. This, this one is also clear, clear cut. You know, you just drive, you get in your car, you drive, it's business to the right, it's uh, the, to the left, and you can write notes. And, and at the end of the month, it gives you how many, how much miles, how many, how many, how many miles do you drive. And if you remember in my in, in, in the, the forms of the IRS, there was one section for mileage. And you can deduct this. This is an expense also that you can deduct. And this one is not by percentage of space use, it is just by miles, by miles use. You know, this is this is just the way. Uh, but that 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 you that you can that you can that you can use. So with that, I think let me see what I else. No, that's it. So with that, we have six minutes for questions, questions and answers, comments, uh, other topics that you would like to learn about. Next week, we're going to go over uh, a little bit of contract. Uh, and what else? I think that's uh, about it. Uh, a little bit of uh, contracts, which is what we talk about. We can talk a little bit about, um, I don't know, um, payroll if you want. Um, I think, uh, like, now since we're talking about all that business stuff, um, the retirement and say, you know, since we don't have a uh, typical, you know, as a sole proprietor, you don't have anything that's just very typical, um, how you would write that off, like say, or where to go. How do you go to like, say, get mutual funds or, you know, something like that, like a 401k type of plan for me. And how, how do you write that off? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I didn't see that in the, um, Income tax uh, sheet, the IRS worksheet, the 1040. Uh -huh. You know how you mentioned there's all these different types of expenses on there, uh, you know, medical or anything like that. That's they're, they're definitely write offs, but is it also portioned out or, or is yes, it just a Yes, pool? no, you, you, can, you can do it as uh, well. In this, uh, in this section, as you say, you know, pension and profit sharing plans, pro pension and profit sharing plans. Uh, but also you can put it on your uh, on your schedule C uh, like in here uh, um, oh but this is income this income um, yeah there's we, we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about it uh, there's a section in which you can most of it mo most of the form is just about income 
uh, not about expense uh, on the taxes, but uh, we will talk about that in retirement. There's uh, qualified and non-qualified uh, plans for retirement, and qualified is something that you pay before taxes, and non-qualified is that you pay after taxes. And probably for you, I mean, we're going to talk about that the last the last class. Thank you. And, and, and another instrument that we have for retirement. I was wondering if there will be more um, some information on marketing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. We're going to talk about uh, client retention too. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. That that's going to be next week. Client retention contracts and uh, what kind of marketing do you want? Do you want to talk about Excel? I mean, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, internet websites. That's where I'm a little lost. I'm not sure where to even begin. We're just starting up, so um, oh, okay. I, I'm I'm in this market. Probably social media marketing. I'm imagining is the most effective, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. We'll, we'll talk about that. We'll, we'll 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 come up with something to 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 give you some insight of on how to market your business. Thank you. Next week. And then just one request, if I can just have you turn on your camera for a brief second, and it's just for attendance. Uh, this is something that we do in all classes at the beginning and at the end of the class. So. I just want to make sure that you guys are there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. If anything comes up, any questions, you guys can email me, email Gabe, and then, um, hi. <laughs> um, yeah, if anything comes up, please feel free to call, email, and I will see you guys next week if there's no other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. No, thank you. Good night. See you next week. Mm -hmm. Be thank safe. You. Bye. Bye.